Have you ever been in a situation where you notice that you and your friends just have completely different tastes when it comes to games? Or if you are a game developer, have you ever been asked the question what types of players your game is for and you didn't really know what to say? Well, this series of videos is exactly about the topic, about looking at different concepts to group games and players. In the last video, we looked at José Galvas' classification of games, which groups games into four different categories. And in this video, I want to do the same, but instead of grouping games, we are going to group players. And how are we going to do that? We're going to look at the Bartle taxonomy of player types, a very famous concept developed by writer, professor and game researcher Richard Bartle. And I have to say, there's a lot to say about the Bartle taxonomy. So without any further ado, let's dive right into it. Richard Bartle is not only a writer and game researcher, he also was one of the creators of Mod 1, the first ever mod. Now, that's important to our story, but if you are my age or younger, you probably don't know what a mod is. I mean, at least I didn't. So what's a mod? A mod is a multi-user dungeon. They are multiplayer real-time virtual worlds. And usually mods are role-playing games set in a uh, fantasy world where players could pick a class, level up, and slay monsters, explore the map, complete quests, uh, sometimes group together and in some cases even kill each other. So if that sounds a lot like an MMO, that's because mods basically are. Simply put, mods are the predecessors of what we call MMOs today. Okay, so why is that important to our story? Well, Bartel did not only create Mod 1, he was also creator of many, many more mods. And during a long and heated discussion on a bulletin board, where players would talk about why they actually want to play mods, he noticed that different players had different motivations. Since he was a senior administrator on that bulletin board, he basically had to read the whole conversation, which, by the way, went on for over six months. And during that time, he started to notice patterns. So to be precise, he noticed that players and their motivations could be put into four distinct categories. He gave them names, so we have the group of the achievers, the explorers, the socializers and the killers. So these groups already sound interesting, let's have a look at all of them. Our first group are the achievers. Achievers are players that like to reach goals. So either the game gives them goals or they just simply make up their own goals. Achievers usually also like to accumulate treasure, whatever form that takes. So for example, a lot of currency, uh, the fanciest gear, uh, or just collecting expensive objects. They also like to complete collections. They like to get all the achievements, which is, I guess, no surprise if you think about the name. And some achievers just simply want to finish the game, which is an achievement and a goal by itself. Now, they don't really fear putting a lot of time into reaching their goal, but they also want to be efficient about it because it's about, you know, getting stuff, it's about getting the achievement, it's about getting the loot. So they don't want to experiment, they don't want to explore, it, they just want to get the rewards. And this stands in stark contrast to our second group, which are the explorers. Explorers are very different than achievers, they don't care about currency, they don't care about levels and they don't care about gear. Those things are just a means to an end to explorers. What they actually want to do is, well, exploring. They want to learn everything about the game world, they want to know everything about the lore, they want to find every secret in the story of the game. 
This also means that explorers love to know things that others don't. They like to experiment, they like to learn and to experience new things. And this also means that the worst thing you could ever do to an explorer is to give them a guide, a tutorial or a let's play because they want to find out all these things and even more, but they want to do it by themselves. Our third group, the socializers, have a different set of motivations. They do not play a game for wealth or knowledge, they play a game because they are interested in people and their stories. You could say that sometimes the game even is just a backdrop for socializers. It's a way to forge and maintain relationships. Socializers are players who like to help others, uh, players who are active in a chat, players that, for example, also take a role that nobody else wants to play, like, for example, in some games, playing the healer, because to them it's not about the role that they play, they just want to enjoy the company. Now, it's important to note that this might imply that socializers just like to play multiplayer games, but that's not completely true. Some socializers also are interested in complex, deep, fleshed out NPCs and getting to know them. So for example, a lot of socializers like games like Stardew Valley, where they can meet different NPCs, talk to them and learn about their story. And then we have our last group, the killers. Now, this group is a little bit complicated, not because of the concept itself, but because the way that Bartel originally intended killers to be like, and the way they get interpreted today by game developers are not the same thing. Bartel originally said about killers that they are people who want to dominate others. And the classic way to do that would be through attacking them or just in some other way to make other players' lives difficult. He also says that the more massive the distress is that the killer can cause to others, the more fun it is for the killer. So in short, the way that Bartol originally described killers, they are trolls, they are troublemakers, and just generally people who aren't, you know, the nicest. But the most common way in which game developers are talking about killers today is just basically competitive players. They are power gamers, they like to um, be better than others, they like to be in the first place in a leaderboard, um, they like to beat others in a competition. So in both cases, dominating others is what gets killers going. But the question is, is it in a fair competition or is it just by guile and despicable behavior basically? Personally, I think that the reinterpretation that is more prevalent today is also more useful. It's more up to date because in modern competitive games, this group of players form a substantial part of the gaming community. However, of course, it's also interesting to look at killers in the original way as Bartel intended it since if you are creating a multiplayer game, it's also important to think about trolls when you design a game and how to deal with them. Okay, so we met all four player types in the Bartel taxonomy and I would say that's already quite interesting. It describes what motivates players and there even are tests where you can find out which Bartel type you are yourself. By the way, I put one of the links for a Bartel test in the description below, so if you want to find out, go ahead. But just having the four types is not what makes Bartel's taxonomy genius. 
The genius thing about the Bartol taxonomy is rather what he did with these four types when he refined his model. So what Bartol did was to take these four types and put them on a graph. The graph has two axes, world versus player and acting versus interacting. Now I would say that the world player axis is quite self-explanatory. After all, players are players and the world is either the game itself or the virtual world that you can explore in the game. However, uh, on the other hand, a lot of people struggle a lot with the acting versus interacting axis. It can be explained a little bit better if you ask yourself the following simple question. We have a target for our axis, which is the second axis, so world versus players. And if the target is the focus, so if either the world or the players are the focus, it's interacting. However, if the players or the world are just a means to an end, then it's acting. This all makes more sense once we put the player types on the graph itself. So each of the four player types goes into one quadrant of the graph and that then results in the following. Achievers have fun acting on the virtual world. It's not the world itself that they cherish. It's about the things they can get from that world, so loot and stuff. Explorers have fun interacting with the world. The virtual world is the focus here. They want to learn everything about it. They want to explore it. Socializers have fun interacting with other players. These players are the focus. They want to socialize with these players. They want to talk to them. They want to play with them. So, interacting. And last but not least, killers have fun acting on other players. The other players are just a means to an end, which for the killers is they want to be the best, they want to win. By framing these four player types in that way, game developers can see how different player types relate to their game. And the graph also provides a useful mindset to see how a new feature could impact the different player types. So here, let's make some examples. Example one would be to add a chat to your game. The chat will allow players to interact with each other and maybe even also act on each other if you are misusing the chat for being mean and trolling. Thus, the chat would be a feature for socializers first, but it could also be abused by killers to a certain extent. And I admit that one was an easy example. So let's make a little bit more interesting one. Example two, a Halloween event with new activities and even some new loot, like for example, a fancy pumpkin hat. So players could definitely interact with the world through the new events, through the new activities, and maybe there's also some story to explore, but they could also act on the world to get the new fancy loot. So that means this feature would be for achievers and explorers. And let's make one last example. Number three, something a little bit different. Um, let's say we would add a new villager to the game that you can befriend, that you can talk to, that you could get to know and maybe even date or marry at some point. Um, so that would be in a game like Stardew Valley, for example. This would allow players to interact with the NPC, which is part of the game world. So again, that would be for explorers. But since we also mentioned that some socializers like to talk to NPCs and to interact with them, this would of course also mean that this feature would appeal to some socializers as well. Okay, so with these examples, we looked at the four player types, we looked at the graph between world and game and acting and interacting. And these are the most important things you need to know about the Bartle taxonomy. 
there are some more things that I would like to mention, but before we do that, let's make a short recap. So to summarize, Richard Bartle's taxonomy knows four different player types. Achievers, which are players who like to reach goals and collect things. Explorers enjoy discovery. They seek out the new and want to increase their knowledge. Socializers love to interact with other people. To them, games are a way to spend time with others. And killers. Killers like to dominate others. They like to be the best and they like to win competitions. Bartle not only defined these four types, but also placed them on a matrix to illustrate how the players relate to the game and the game world. Achievers want to act on the virtual world. Explorers like to interact with the virtual world. Socializers like to interact with other players and killers like to act on other players. So yes, these are the basics. But as I mentioned before, there are three more things you should know about the Bartol taxonomy of player types. The first point is that Bartol not only researched the four types individually, but also in how they relate to each other. So how do they think about one another and do they attract or scare off other types? If you are designing a multiplayer game, that's definitely a point worth thinking about, I would say. The second point is that no one is just completely one type and neither is a gaming community. Some people might also appear as one type but actually are another. So for example, if you look at the Counter-Strike player, they might seem like a killer, but it could also be that they are actually a socializer and just want to play games with their friends. And the last point is that Bartle suggests that players change type over time. And he suggests that they start with killer, then go to explorer, then to achiever and land at socializer. This is also one explanation why the group of socializers is considered to be the biggest. And that's the Bartle taxonomy of player types. As you can see, it has some similarities with Roger Galois' classifications of games, which we looked at in the last video. Like, for example, that they both have a competitive category. But for the most part, I would say that Bartle focuses on different aspects. And to illustrate that, let's have a look at what I said about myself in the last video. Personally, I would say I'm definitely in the group of Argon. When I play games, I like to learn, I like to become stronger and more skillful. I also often watch or read secondary content such as guides or tutorials to understand the game better and to learn faster. In this clip, I described how I fit into the category of Argon, which stands for competition. But if you now look at the Bartle taxonomy, would you say I described myself as a killer? I would say definitely not, right? I talked about learning, about becoming better at the game, about mastering the game. And to me, that sounds rather like an achiever than a killer. So as you can see, different models to look at games and players also result in different outcomes. This is also why we will spend at least one more video on that topic. So in the next part, we will have a look at what architects, ninjas and gardeners have to do with players. So thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you in the next video. Bye!